I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This is another video in my series, Black Box 101, where I teach you to tune and troubleshoot your quadcopter with Black Box. Uh, it, we've gotten to the point in the series where I've gone over the basic stuff, and now we're looking at specific problems and seeing how to investigate them uh, and hopefully solve them using Black Box. In this one, we've got a quad quadcopter that is falling out of the air for no apparent reason, and we're going to figure out why. The quadcopter's fallen out of the air for no apparent reason. Uh, so let, there's a couple different directions we can take uh, to approach this. First of all, let's just find the spot where it falls out of the air. And in order to do that, we're going to look. I've got the gyros up here on screen. We're going to look at the gyros, and it should be pretty apparent when that happens. As we scroll forward, this is all just flying. We can also look at the sticks, by the way. We can see the pilot moving the sticks around. It's flying normally. And then toward the end... Here, we can see the gyros kind of just go nuts. They sort of go, well, the, the uh, yaw gyro goes extreme one direction. The pitch gyro goes extreme the other direction. The roll gyro goes extreme the other direction. This is not normal flight. And if you look at the difference between, say, here and, like, here, this is normal flight. And then you can see, like, the quadcopter is just, it's spinning, right? Yaw is, uh, let's see, at, at 200 degrees per second. About 1300 degrees per second on roll and just kind of stay in there, right? Or so it's flipping out, right? This is this is 13, 1400 degrees per second is like full stick deflection and it just stays that way for many seconds. So we finally, we've clearly identified the part in the capture or the flight where things went wrong. So then we have to start asking yourselves what caused things to go wrong. And the first thing uh, that I'd like to look at here is whether the copter went into fail-safe. And I actually don't think it went into fail-safe. Usually when a copter goes into fail-safe, it kind of freezes and continues flying at exactly the same attitude. Or maybe if it stays in fail-safe long enough, it shuts down, at which point it will fall and it will tumble, but it won't go go nutso like that, okay? So I don't think this is fail-safe, but when a copter sort of stops responding and falls out of the sky, checking failsafe is a thing that I like to do. And in another situation, it might be failsafe. So let me just show you how to check that first. I'm going to check that by going view, values table. And what I want to do is I want to look at the part of the flight where the, the loss of control happened. And I want to look at the flight mode flags. And I want to look at the failsafe phase. And I want to look at RX signal received and RX flight channel is valid. So RX flight channel is valid means that the channels that are coming in are, well, valid. In other words, they're within a valid range. If we were looking at PWM, it would mean that the channels were between RX min USEC and RX max USEC, the, the maximum and the minimum valid PWM values. Uh, I'm not really sure what RX flight channel is valid might mean for a serial receiver, but suffice it to say, if the channels stop being valid, then we'll go into fail safe. Uh, RX signal received just simply means that we're receiving any signal at all. So we could be receiving a signal, but it's not valid, or we could simply not be receiving a signal at all. It would indicate maybe the receiver had just come completely disconnected. Finally, we've got fail-safe phase here, which indicates whether or not we're in fail-safe. Uh, and that is not the be-all, end-all of whether we're in fail-safe. I'll tell you about that in a second. But if I just scroll forward here, I'm going to watch fail-safe phase. And notice failsafe phase is idle, which means we are not in failsafe. I'm going to scroll forward and I'm going to see if at any point we go into failsafe. Or if at any point RX signal received or RX flight channel is valid becomes zero. And as I go forward, by the way, I could do this with the mount, with a keyboard. I could press right arrow as well to skip forward. I can see that, no, it does not happen. Failsafe never triggers. And the signal, you know, so, so we did not go into failsafe here. But actually, that's not the be-all, end-all of whether we're in failsafe. Uh, because as you may know, if you watched my video about failsafe, there's stage one and stage two failsafe. What can happen is that the, the RX signal is lost and the flight controller will sort of wait for, well, the default is a tenth of a second 
uh, no, no, sorry, the default is one full second. I like to shorten it to about a half a second personally. The flight controller will wait before it initiates failsafe. That's called stage one failsafe. And the idea there is that if you momentarily lose your radio link, we're not just going to dump the copter immediately the second there is just a, a fraction of a second loss of control. We're going to wait and maybe we'll get it back. And you may have had that happen sometimes. You're flying and the controls suddenly sort of lock out and then it comes back. That's a that's a stage one failsafe that recovered. After a certain and, and by the way, the, with the default behavior for stage one failsafe is that the sticks will recenter themselves and the throttle will I think it goes to, to zero. But you can change that. You can cause the sticks to hold their previous value. And I actually like to set the throttle to hold its previous value on stage one failsafe. But that's a topic for another video. Uh, when when stage one failsafe occurs, my experience is that you will not see the failsafe flags indicate that failsafe is occurring. What you'll see is that the the RC command will freeze up. And actually, I'm not 100% sure about this because it's also possible that the receiver itself, before the receiver indicates that failsafe has occurred, it's like there's a there's a pre-failsafe failsafe. The receiver realizes that signal has been lost and the receiver doesn't perform its failsafe behavior immediately. So the receiver may freeze the channels for some some number of milliseconds uh, before then the receiver goes no pulses or whatever it's programmed to do when failsafe occurs. And then beta flight or clean flight has stage one failsafe where it will wait for some fraction of a second before it then takes the failsafe behavior and shuts the copter down. Uh, and what we're going to look for here is we're going to look at the RC command and see if they lock up or go to zero at any point here. And that would indicate that we had a stage one failsafe that did not then, or maybe it did transition, well, we know it didn't transition to a stage two failsafe because we see that the failsafe flags never never indicate that failsafe has occurred. So again, I'm just gonna scroll forward and I'm gonna look at RC command, which is what the sticks are doing. Um, and we can see here, it does look like the pilot actually lowered the stick here. See, the, the, the copter has started flipping out Right about here, it starts flipping out, right? And so the pilot is still inputting stick commands. Let's get the gyros up here as well, why don't we? Yeah, so here is the moment where the copter begins flipping out. Right about here, it's, it's spinning out of control. And we can see that the RC command, the sticks are still moving and doing things, right? So we're not in fail safe here because we can see stick commands coming in through the receiver. And then at the end here, things center out, and that's probably because the pilot has just given up and eventually disarms. Um, so it's maybe we went into failsafe here, but I don't think so. I think the pilot just lowered the throttle, centered the sticks, and disarmed. Okay, so this is not a failsafe scenario, and I, I kind of didn't think it was, but now we've verified that. If you are losing control of your copter, and especially if you're getting a lockout, like you're flying and all of a sudden the copter stops responding and then it comes back and starts flying again. That's probably a failsafe and, and well, it's you could look in the black box if you need to convince yourself. If the copter falls out of the sky and it refuses to rearm until you flip the arming switch twice, that also is a failsafe. That's a stage two failsafe. Uh, and the key indicator of that, well, it's that the copter will drop out of the sky. It'll refuse to rearm until you flip the switch twice. And the idea here, there is that we want to let you rearm if you want to, uh, if you want to, maybe if you crash the copter on the other side of a fence and you want to try and fly it home. Um, but we don't want to let you immediately rearm until you're sure that that's what you really want to do since failsafe is by definition an unusual scenario. Um, when you get a stage two failsafe, the copter, all four engines will shut down at once. All four motors will shut down at once. And that's another indication that uh, that failsafe is occurring. But black box, of course, would be the final determinant. So what caused this scenario? Well, in order to understand that, let's take a look at the motors. And we'll also look at the gyros. And when we look at the motors, what we see is that right here, one of the motors goes to full. If we look at the yellow motor here, we can see that it is at 100%. It's 100%. It's at full throttle. And we can see also, let's see here, that is the, looks like that's the back left motor. It's at 100%. And you might say, okay, well, uh, that motor's at 100%. It's not making enough thrust and uh, it needs to be making more thrust. Uh, and, and you'd be right about that, but not in exactly the way that you think. 
the analogy that I like to make is uh, if you are in your car and you press the brake pedal and the car doesn't slow down, what are you going to do? You're going to press the brake pedal harder, right? And by the time you plow into a wall or whatever happens, you're going to be standing on that freaking brake pedal, right? You're going to be pulling the emergency brake, standing on the brake pedal as hard as you can. And that's what we see happening here. This motor has actually stopped making thrust entirely and the flight controller is standing on the brake. Well, in this case, it's the gas, not the brake. It's saying, give me more power, Scotty. And Scotty's saying, oh, she's giving it all she's got, Captain. Like she got no more. And in fact, she hasn't got any. Because if we look, we, there's two times when a motor will go to max output. And one is when the copter is accelerating dramatically in the direction that the motor makes it go. So if you do a right roll, the left two motors are going to go to full potentially for a moment while the copter accelerates into that move. Uh, but the other time that you'll see a motor go to full is when the motor has stopped making thrust entirely. Let's say that the copter is the, the left motors stop making thrust. The copter begins to fall into those motors and the flight controller is going to try and correct that by speeding the motors up. But if they don't speed up, the, the motor output is going to go to full, even though the motors are not doing anything. And the key takeaway here is that the motor traces here show what the flight controller is asking the motors to do, not what they are actually doing. There is no feedback mechanism for the flight controller to, to know or to tell you what the motors are actually doing. But we can infer that because we can see, if you just look at the 3D model, we can see that the copter is kind of roll there we go rolling to the left isn't it it's rolling to the left as i slide this forward and we can see that the left hand motor is at full now if the left hand motor was actually at full throttle the copter would not be able to roll to the left it'd be rolling to the right so the fact that we see the the gyro tells us that the copter is rolling towards that motor that motor is falling down even though the throttle output is at full, we know that the motor can't actually be at full. So what we know here is that the back left motor stopped making thrust. We know that because that is the motor that went to full. The other motors are not at maximum output, and that means that they are making thrust. They are doing roughly what they're being told. Uh, it's the motor that stops making thrust that goes to full counterintuitively because the motor traces show what is being asked of the motor, not what it's actually doing. And the only time you really would ask a motor to go to full and stay there would be if it had stopped doing anything in the first place. The next question we could ask is why the motor stopped making thrust. And, and there is no single best answer to that. Uh, but I, I can't help but notice that immediately before the motor flipped out, the motor stopped making thrust, it was at idle for some period of time. So here the motor's at zero. And then as we begin to throttle up, we go straight to max. And what this might indicate is that your min throttle is too low. And anytime somebody is experiencing this scenario where a motor stops making thrust, especially if it's at the end of a flip or roll when the motors are going from low to high uh, very rapidly, uh, I say try raising min throttle. If your min throttle is too low, then when you're in the air, when the air is pushing on the prop, even if on the bench you set min throttle such that the motor spins smoothly at the lowest throttle setting, uh, in, if you're in the air and your your know, air is pushing on the prop uh, because like you know you're descending and air is coming up through the prop, well that's not happening on the bench. So you can get scenarios where on the bench min throttle is fine, but when you get in the air it's not enough and the motor stops and doesn't restart, uh, and then you get a scenario like this. So I say anytime anytime you have scenarios like this, raise min throttle by 20 points. And my general guideline is that min throttle should be I I like 25 percent 25 microseconds higher than the lowest point where the motors all begin to spin. So if you find that when you go to the motors tab and you raise the motor slider, all the motors sort of begin to spin, spin smoothly around, let's say 1025 microseconds, then min throttle should be 1050 in, in, my, in my opinion. And maybe higher, it depends on the motors and the ESCs, uh, but, but that's where I would start. Uh, if you get to the point where your min throttle is around 1070, 1080, 1100, as much as 1070 I've seen, again, depending on the ESCs, uh, especially with older BL Heli ESCs, it seems like you need a little higher min throttle. But uh, around 1070, 1075, I think is not unreasonable. If you start getting min throttle up close to 1100, and that, by the way, that assumes that you've calibrated with min command at 1000, right? That's, so 1000 is the base of your scale. 
Uh, if you're up around 1100 though, then I think probably that indicates something is wrong with the ESC or the motor. Uh, I would not normally expect to need that high of a min throttle to keep the motor spinning and keep them from cogging and, and stopping in flight. Let's just take a look. We can actually look in the header here and we can see what min throttle was. Well, where's that gonna throttle min? Min throttle is, oh, so min throttle here is 1100. Uh, and can we see min command? Uh, I don't know about that. I don't think I, I don't, I don't see it. I'd love to know what min command was. Min throttle of 1100 though. Uh, if we assume that min command was around, uh, you know, 1000 then, then I don't think that an excessively low min throttle is the issue here. In fact, maybe this pilot has raised min throttle already to try to solve this issue, and that's actually not the cause, and it hasn't solved it. Uh, so then what else could cause this? Well, generally, the next thing I think that causes this, it could be a slipping prop. It could be a slipping prop. Your prop wasn't quite tight enough, and, and, and this was the moment it chose to let go. Uh, yeah, so check that the props are tight and not slipping. Uh, they don't have to be super tight, just tight enough. Some, if, frankly, if the prop is tight enough that you can still kind of turn it with your hand if you grab the motor real tight, that's actually fine for flight. It's not going anywhere in flight. Uh, it, you don't need to be a gorilla about it, but if you if the prop is loose and can let go in the air, you can get a scenario where you can fly right up until you hit the hit the throttle a little bit hard and then it lets go. So make sure the prop uh, is is tight and not slipping. And then the next place to go, frankly, is I think physical damage to an ESC or motor. A lot of times people say, man, I don't know. I don't know why my copter's dropping out of the air. And well, it turns out that you crashed it into a tree yesterday and you did, you know, you crash them enough times and they'd get damaged. Occasionally people even say to me, these capacitors on my ESC, are they, I mean, it's been fine up till now. The capacitors fell off and I, I had a prop strike and the capacitors fell off and I kept flying and it's been fine up till now. So I don't know why it's suddenly dropping out of the air. It's like, well, you, you know, the capacitors fell off. It's like saying, you know, I, 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 I fell 13 feet off a rock and was walking fine, and then suddenly my ankle started hurting. Well, you know, probably it was that, why didn't it hurt immediately afterwards? I don't know, but, you know, you probably broke your ankle or hurt your ankle, and that's why. It's not rocket science. So physical damage is the next place I go, and uh, the thing to do is, is just trial and error. Process of elimination. You swap out the ESC, and if that doesn't fix it, then you swap out the motor, and if that doesn't fix it, and you're in a pickle, and it's a much more open-ended question, but a lot of times that's going to be the solution. Well, there you go. I uh, hope you have learned something about how to troubleshoot to the scenario where your copter falls out of the sky. Number one, uh, you, now you know how to find out if it's fail-safe. Look at the fail-safe state flags in, in the, in the uh, data, and also look for the RC command to freeze up for a moment. That, that freezing up will usually indicate that, that that's a fail-safe as well. And then number two, uh, you can see how to identify if a motor has stopped making thrust. When a motor output goes to full, but you see that the copter is moving, that motor is moving down, not up, you know the motor cannot be actually be at full, and that, that indicates the motor has stopped making thrust. I'm really excited about the, the it's coming soon, the ability to have the ESCs report RPMs and other telemetry information uh, via the telemetry wire, and that's something that KISS ESCs do today, uh, but it's not, it's not, I think, fully supported under Betaflight. Maybe it is. I don't know if Betaflight reads RPMs. When you, Betaflight can interact with KISS telemetry, but I'm not sure that it reads RPMs. I know it reads current output. But uh, if you have a full KISS setup, you can actually get the actual real-time RPMs from the ESCs, uh, and that is super cool. And I hope that that's something that we'll see eventually on the B new BL Heli 32 ESCs. They, they, they are planned to support telemetry and what a really useful piece of telemetry information is the RPMs so that we could look and we could see the actual RPMs of the motors here in black box, not just what the flight controller is asking for. Uh, but that's something for the future. Uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and happy flying.